Hey guys, Wax with Iron Man 4x4, and today we're gonna get into the install of the Iron Man 4x4 Itber 091 nudge bar for the front of your Toyota RAV4. Grab your tools, I'm gonna need some help. If I owned a RAV4, I'd call it a RAV5, because I carry a full-size spare. Cuidado, safety talk. All right, if you're working on a garage floor, make sure your car's in park, e-brakes on, chalk your rear tires. You definitely want to jack the front of your car up because you're gonna need some room to crawl up underneath there. If you're in a shop and working on a lift, take all those safety precautions, make sure that however high you lift the car, it's set back down on the locks. And we're also going to need to support the front cross member. So you're going to need a high lift jack. Besides that, I think we can get wrenching. So grab a body clip removal tool and a 10 mil socket. We'll lift the car up in the air and we'll start ripping it apart. All right, we gotta get this front skid plate off. To do that, you're gonna have one, two, three, four of these pop-out clips. I like to use a body clip removal tool. You can grab a flathead screwdriver, a pick, something sharp. Just don't hurt yourself, unless you want to, and then that's kinda on you. There we go. With those clips aside, we gotta get our 10 mil hardware out. So you're gonna have one here on the fender liner, three 10 mils here, four along the front side, four times 10 mil, what's that? You got a 40 mil wrench. You got three more 10 mils here and one more on this inner fender side. So I'm gonna start spinning them out. And the last two are gonna be back here on the cross member support. And don't forget, you can always take a picture of your project before you start ripping stuff apart. It's nice to have a reference when you go to put it all back together. Next step is we gotta pull these aluminum support braces off. You're gonna have one on the front right and left. We're over on the front left driver's side here. We're gonna start with this 12 mil bolt up here. Then we'll pull these radiator support 12s off that are in here and finish with this big 19 body mount bolt right there. So start at the top here with this 12. Now I'm going to set that aside so we don't lose it. And I'm going to grab these two 12s. All right, and while I've got this set up, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, before we drop these body mount bolts, these big 19s right here, we want to make sure that we support this front cross member. So grab yourself a floor jack and a jack stand. I've got a tall jack stand here because we're working on the lift. Grab a 19 and have at it. All right, I'll set that aside. Same thing over here. And the last piece to this puzzle of getting this support out is that 10 mil right there, which is hanging onto our plastics. So we'll zip that out. There's this black steel bracket that's riveted on to that aluminum support. Just rock that down, twist it down, pull on your plastics and rotate it kind of back up and out. And we'll take the one on the driver's side out too. And I'm gonna spin that 10 mil back in where I found it so I don't lose it. There we go. All right, we got the nudge bar out of the packaging in the box. We've got all of our hardware laid out next to our skid plates. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna test fit this or mock it up in the car because we have to make some cuts so these little tabs hanging down can punch actually up underneath the skin. I'm gonna take this long body mount bolt, it's 19 mil, I'm gonna stick it up through the bottom of the nudge bar mount. Make sure I have a deep dish 19 socket on the end of my impact, because we want it to be impactful. And then I'm gonna try to support this by my lonesome and get that guy to go where it needs to go. And same thing. All right, now that we've got the bar mocked up here, grab yourself a Sharpie and we're gonna trace around these welded tabs. There we go. And same thing on the other side. Got these all marked off. Now we can grab our 19 mil socket on our impact and I'll lower these body mount bolts out. We'll pull the whole thing back down. Grab yourself a hole saw. As long as you can fit it over that tab there, you know you're good to go. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut a hole in the bottom of that plastic so this tab can fit up in there. Also, you don't have to use a hole saw. If you want to use an oscillating multi-tool or router that out, 
it's totally your call. You just have to be able to get this tab up through that lower plastic. All right, now we gotta pull out this black piece of plastic underneath the radiator support. It's held on by one, two, and three 10 millimeter bolts. Push forward, put that anywhere. All right, now what we're gonna do is center up this Chris hole saw, and then we will go ahead and drill ourselves a Chris hole. There we go, same thing on the other side. One more C-hole. All right, so now we can move on to our aluminum support bars. I think they call them bar irons in the instruction, but they're not iron, they're aluminum, duh. So we're gonna pull this out. The one on the left is stamped right here from Toyota. It says 3L for left. The other one says 3R for right. We're going to cut right along this line. And then I pre-baked one for us. It will look like that when you're done. This bracket will fit right back in here, bolt into place, minus this lower flange. Cut to some B-roll of me cutting. All right, now we can take our left aluminum bracket and this Iron Man bracket here. You're gonna set the bracket here on the ground. Again, this is our left bracket. This guy here is gonna fit right over that threaded stud. Now, depending on what trim level of RAV4 you have, some of them came with a pressed in threaded stud or we have supplied hardware. So you'll run a bolt through the back here, drop that down so the washer goes over and that's gonna be a 13 mil nut. There we go, we'll snug it up. And I'll kind of show you what we're working with here. There you go. So this left-hand side, when you put it back into the car, Again, driver's left-hand side is gonna look like that. This bracket is gonna hang down. That's where we drilled the hole in the plastic. That welded tab on the bar is gonna fit up there. Then we can bolt those two together. But what you wanna do is grab the supplied rivets. We're gonna drop these rivets down in these holes here. We'll do that. We'll grab our rivet gun and we'll give it one, two and a break. And there you go, that rivet is done. One, two, we can take our 13 millimeter wrench. We can lock that nut down nice and tight. Now we can fit it up into the car. Hey, so let's get this assembly mounted into place. What I'm gonna do is this radiator support bracket has these two 12 millimeter nuts, flange nuts, so have those handy. And what we'll do is we'll feed this up over the top and wiggle the bracket into place. And then I'm just gonna spin these on, just get a few threads to hold it. This is the second bracket, and this is gonna sandwich over the top of the OEM aluminum square tube bracket. And then that 12 mil bolt, will go through the both of them and lock everything down. So with our aluminum box bracket in place and loosely being held on the radiator support, you can see that that threaded hole in the body, that's where we're going into that support. This slot on the bracket up top, that will sandwich over everything, and that 12 mil bolt will go all the way through. Grab your ratchet with a 12 mil, and as you're tightening this, this black bracket can move around. You wanna make sure that that's hanging down nice and flush, and then after we get the nudge bar installed, that's got a little bit of wiggle room so we can line it up with the hardware there. I'm gonna snug these down just a little bit more. Nice and tight. Okay, we'll do the same thing over on the passenger side. All right, now we can hang the bar. I'm trying to get that plastic pushed back out of the way. Make sure I'm lined up. Now we'll jump over here to the other side. We want to leave those brackets loose so we can slide everything into place. That bracket goes on the inside. All right, just to kind of walk you in where we're at now. Bars installed in the main body mounts. Now we've got to get our bracketing put together. So grab your smaller hardware and this little tab that we drilled the hole for that goes up through the bumper skin. We're gonna get in through it on this side. Now, the bolt with the large flat washer, and we're gonna try to feed it in from the outside in. Come on, there we go. See, get that lug out of the way. I'll grab my other flat washer, split washer, followed up by our nut. 13 millimeter box in wrench on the back side. All right, once you get this all locked down, we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now you take your bigger hardware pack here. It's gonna be a bolt, two flat washers, and a flange serrated nut. The nut is a 15 and the bolt head is a 16. 
and we're gonna take bolt, flat washer, run it outside in, flat washer on the outside, fall up there with the nut, and we'll tighten that 15 down. Now we just gotta do the same thing on the other side, then we'll go through and torque our main body mount bolts, get our skid plates on, we are almost done. This has gone quickly. Okay, now we wanna go back and make sure we tighten these main K-frame bolts, these body mount bolts, 19 millimeter. You're gonna tighten them down to 100 foot-pounds. Cool. These are torqued. I'm gonna go back through, just double check that all of our hardware is locked down nice and tight. All right, let's get our side plates put on. Grab six of those M6 cap head screws. They're like a four mil uh, hex with a little washer. When you're putting plates on, work from the center out because then once you get your fastener in, it'll support itself. All right, we'll grab our number four Allen and tighten those down. Cool, that looks good. I'll grab the other side plate, then we'll finish up with the center one. Cool, center plate next. I will remember my own advice and start with the center. Cool, there you go. Now we can relax and get the rest of the hardware put on. Going good, of course, no issues. That looks good. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of fender liner trimming just to make this look really nice. This main mount for our nudge bar is got some of this fender liner in the way. So I'm just gonna cut a little half circle out of this thing with some tin snips. There we go, and I'm gonna bend that piece of metal up and out of the way. Back on itself. Cool, because that will let this front fender liner push forward so that we can get it all secured with our included hardware. All right, we're on to the last little nice finishing touch. We're gonna pull these wings for our fenders off of our OEM splash guard. Bend those in, we'll take that, and at this lip here, we'll cut them off. So I'm just kinda taking a little bit as I go. That goes up top over our bracket. So, I got a little ahead of myself. When you're putting these front little fender guards back in, drop your side plate so you can have access. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our stock hardware, this uh, 10 mil fender uh, screw, and I'm gonna zip this back in here, up top, and then I'm gonna take another one of these 10 mil because it has a threaded plastic nut receiver on the back end. So we'll feed that up. For this inner mount here, if you want, you can just take your stock OEM 10 mil coarse thread bolt. You do the same thing on the other side, you're done. I'm gonna put that plate back on. Done. Holy tarnation, we got this thing done. It's super beefy. I love how robust this is. This is not just a weak little light bar that you can put some lights on that you know you stomp on, it's gonna just peel right off your car. This thing is the real friggin' deal. And I'm gonna show you how tough it is. Go ahead, try to insult it. It'll take it, look at that. Go to ironman4x4america.com, get yourself light bars or some seven inch or nine inch rounds and get them bolted on here. You're gonna wanna take advantage of being able to put a bunch of light on your car when you're out roaming around. You can light everything up. If you want one of these ITBUR 091s for your RAV4, turn into a Ravenger. Go to ironman 4 america.com We will help you out over there. Bye.